Everybody take a hymnal. Let's turn to page number two. Come thou fount of every blessing as we stand. songs, don't you? Great. We're so glad you're here. We want to take this opportunity to welcome Faith home from, I, I believe, I believe y'all, not from Greenbook, from Cowpens, right? God bless you. We're glad. All, well, y'all wave at me all over the building, all right? So glad you're here. Can't sit you together. It's just too crowded, but we're delighted you're here. We welcome you. You're the honored guest, all right? Faith home, you're the honored guest here at Mountain View Baptist Church this morning. And we appreciate your presence, all right? We're going to pray, and then we'll make some announcements. Brother Mark, if you'll pray with us. Dear Father, we thank you for allowing us to be back in church this morning, God. We do admit, like the songwriter said, that we're truly indebted to, to the grace of God, and how it came in our life and how it changed our life, Lord. And everything we have in our life now that's good, God, is because we've accepted your saving grace in our life, God. And if there be somebody here, God, this morning, no doubt in this building, who've never experienced you as their personal Lord and Savior. Sure would be a shame to go to hell and go through a church doors that preaches the gospel. And I pray, God, this morning you deal with hearts and lives, God, that you'd help us as the saints of God to rejoice in the fact of our salvation, help sinners to tremble in the state of their soul. We pray, God, this morning we love you. Just proud we could call you our Savior. Proud we could call you our King, our Priest, and our Prophet. God, we are all three, and God, we love you. Pray, God, you would touch us this morning. We appreciate your presence. The liberty in your house, we'll be grateful for it. We ask it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you. you. may be seated all over the building. Again, thank you for coming this way on this Sunday morning, on a beautiful Sunday morning. We're glad you're here, and we want to encourage you, if you can, to come back tonight. We'll be here in church service tonight at 6 p.m., all right? Everybody is welcome to join us for the 6 p.m. service, and then on Wednesday night, we meet at 7.30, and before the Wednesday night service, we have a large and a very delicious meal in our fellowship hall, and all of you are welcome to attend that. That fellowship hall is back behind us across the road, all right? We'd be honored to have you on Wednesday night for the supper, okay? Now, young people, everybody needs to listen. It's this Saturday, January 27th. The bus will be leaving at 7.30 a.m. to go to the Wahoo Baptist Church, and that's uh, down in, uh, somebody tell me the city. 
Cleveland, Georgia, all right? So uh, Wahoo Baptist Church, what a name. I love it. But anyway, uh, bus is leaving at 1030, I mean 730, $10 per person. Contact Nathan Griffith if you've got any questions. A lot of crowds going Friday night. So just talk amongst everybody. They'll fill you in. If anybody wants to go Friday night, they'll make a way for people to go Friday night as well. But specifically, Saturday morning, keep those things in mind, all right? And uh, then also this week, the Lord willing, over at Gateway Baptist Church in Bolden Springs is their annual winter jubilee. It starts tomorrow night and goes through Friday. And the services are 9.30 a.m. Uh, Tuesday through Friday and then 7 p.m. each night. Brother Brian McBride, Brother Bud Stiltner, Brother Jeremy Chisholm, Brother Joe Arthur, and others, an old time singing. Brother Shelton would love to have each and every one of us. The school is going Friday morning to sing, and they've been doing that for years, so keep that in mind. Let's have the ushers come on in. We'll get the regular tithe and regular offering. We also have other visitors here besides Faith Home, and I recognize you, and specifically on the very back, glad you're here. I've got your name and your card at my house. Appreciate you being here today in the house of the Lord, all right? These are the ushers and uh, Jared, the couple on the back. Didn't you invite them? Yes, sir. I thought yeah, that's how true they were. And make sure you shake their hand and make them feel welcome, all right? And, 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 and Joseph, we're going to let you take up offering today. You're going to behave. Everything's good. All right, you've been good this week? You, no, you haven't been good. All right, well, we're still going to let him take up offering, all right? God bless you. Sing a choir. Go ahead. Step up here and pray with us, all right? Josiah Magnuson, okay? Appreciate him being here. Been coming real good to our church. And you'll have to help me now. He is a representative of what district again? 38. 38, which is where? All along the top of Spartanburg County. Top of Spartanburg County. He's one of our representatives at the State House, right? Yes, sir. Got that correct. State House, him along with Stephen Long. And uh, we appreciate him coming. Yeah. And the young lady with now is, is this is your sister. friend? My sister, sister. sister. Yeah. All right, all right. I was gonna, I was gonna maybe think you were dating, but I didn't know what was going on. Uh, anyway, God bless you. You're not dating your sister. We're not putting up with that. Look on up here, friend. We're not putting up with that. Nobody's dating their sister. If you do, we're gonna throw you out. Anybody, we're throwing you out. All right. Pray with us. All right. Thank you, our Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you that we can come together, Lord, as brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, thank you for what you've done for us. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Thank you for rising again so I can walk with you in fellowship. Thank you for the peace that you've given to me, to my heart, Lord. Thank you for the peace that passes understanding. Lord, I pray you'll bless us this morning. Lord, give the man of God wisdom and, and the words to say, Lord, to minister to our hearts today. Lord, bless the offering. We pray that you would use it for your honor and glory. Lord, in Jesus' name, amen.
As I look back on all of my days, so many times, so many ways, I have been blessed, and all I can say is God has been good. Yes, He has. Sometimes life brings sorrow and pain, sometimes the tears fall like the rain, but through it all, He never changed. God is still good. God is still good when the waves roll high. God is still good. All through the night, when I'm done all I can, and I know that you'll stay. God is still good. Clouds of doubt may darken the way, but showers of blessings will come in.
Everybody shake hands. Let's cross the aisle. Welcome our visitors, all right? going to sing our first special number, then we'll have one of the trios, and so we appreciate you listening today. We have some visitors in the balcony. We're glad you're here, and ushers, please make sure that we get visitors' cards to those in the balcony and everywhere else, all right? I did notice some new folks responded and helped us in the choir, and we appreciate it. If you'd like to, uh, if you'd like to participate in the choir, see Brother Kyle immediately after the service, uh, or tonight sometime, we'd be glad to Accommodate and help you and need your assistance, all right? We got several people that are not well, and so there's a few empty spots, but folks are sick and not able to be with us today. Some out of town, but uh, let's pr worship God together with these special singers, all right? It's good to be saved this morning. You know, I was driving home the other night. I was talking to my brother on the phone. You know, my brother led me to the Lord when I was 18 years old. I pulled up into my yard, Brother Randy. I just kind of looked around. I told my brother, I said, I remember the night. I packed everything I had into a bag. I said, look what God's given me. You here this morning, you don't think nobody cares about you. Well, I know one that cares. I've had to walk through some deep valleys in my life. I had to watch a daughter almost die from drugs, and abusive drugs. God changed her life. She's been clean now for two years. She's going to give me a grandbaby. God's good.
Sure been good to this old boy. I've been told, I don't know how many times that old male boy there, he's going to be in jail or in hell. And here I stand this morning. An old guilty sinner. God did something for me I couldn't do for myself. If you're here this morning, he can do the same for you. And we'll try to sing this old song, Does Jesus Care? Oh, I know he cares. Does Jesus care when my heart is pain to deeply for mirth and song as the burdens press and the days distress and my way This 
life with all its great mysteries. Surely one day we'll come to an end. Oh, but faith will conquer the darkness and death and will leave me safe home to my friend. And I believe that the Christ who was slain on the cross has the power to change lives today. For he changed me completely, a new life is mine, that is why by the cross I will stay. I want everybody in the building, please, to take your Bibles. Go to John chapter number 10 in the Gospel of John. Somebody next to you doesn't have a copy of God's Word, either share or let them use yours, and I'm sure they will be so kind as to give it back, all right? John chapter 10, great scripture, familiar scripture, uh, but I'm telling you has a message to it, amen? Thank God for the Bible. Now, you visitors, we're not here to give a political essay. We're not here for that. We're not here to give you a skit nor a drama. We're not going to come up here with a bunch of poetry. We're not talking about social events and political, political, political activism. We're here to open up God's holy Bible, tell you what God says. It really doesn't matter what I say. It doesn't matter what the neighbor next to you says. What matters is what does God say. And that's what we believe in, the Bible, all right? Chapter 10, verse 1, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, that's a servant, the porter openeth and the sheep here, or somebody that stands there in place of the shepherd temporarily. And the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth, his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of a strange of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, that word means truly, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come, Jesus, that they might have life and that they might have it 
more abundantly. And I want to tell you there's something real about the abundant life. Over and above. That which super abounds. That which goes way beyond. That which excels and exceeds. We're not talking about a mindless existence. We're talking about an enjoyable Christian life. We're talking about joy in the Holy Ghost. We're talking about a superabundance of the shepherd's care and the shepherd's provision. I'm glad I not only have life today, but thank God I can enjoy abundant life. And I hope to get to that maybe in a little bit, the Lord willing, all right? Look at verse number 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Look in verse number 14. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and am known of mine. I want to bow for prayer. I want every head bowed, every eye closed. Uh, Brother Randy Jr., would you stand please? Please ask God, help my voice, help this service while we preach. Yes, Lord. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Amen. I want you to keep your Bibles open to here to John chapter 10. I want to direct your attention, first of all, to verse number 11. I am the good shepherd. Look in verse number 14. I am the good shepherd. And ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to say to this audience today that the Lord Jesus Christ, our personal Lord and Savior, without a doubt and without any hesitation, Brother Jared, he is the good shepherd. Thank God, and by the way, he is the good shepherd that lays down his life for the sheep. And so we could preach that right there, but look, if you will, in verse number seven, all right? Look in verse number seven. Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Look in verse number nine. I am. I am the door, all right? I am the door. And so today, I'm not necessarily going to preach on the good shepherd, Brother Josh. I'm going to preach with God's help today in your prayer on I am the door of the sheep. When I read that, Brother Ben, it makes me think about John chapter 6 where he said, I am the bread of life. I think about John chapter number 8. I am the light of the world. I think about John 10. I am the good shepherd. And then I think about John chapter number 11. I am the resurrection and the light. What about John 14? I am the way, the truth, and the light. That's John 14. How about John 15? I am the true vine, all right? And then if you want to, in John chapter 8, He said to tell them that I am has sent you. I'm glad for these I am statements and declarations of the Son of God. Every one of them have a message. Every one of them have great biblical truth for this audience today. I'm thinking about I am the door or I am the door of the sheep. Now we must understand about the sheep foe, Brother Randy. We must understand that in Bible lands what the sheep foe consisted of. Well, if they were in town or near the village, Brother David, they would erect a stone wall with an archway and then even, Brother Pitt, a, uh, an area where the sheep could get out of the weather and they would keep the sheep in the sheepfold by the village or by the town. But you know what? There were many, many times, Brother Brian, 
when they were not in the city and they were not in the village. They were out yonder on the Judean hillside. And so Brother Kyle, you know what they would do? They would erect an enclosure, a sheepfold, if you please, out of either rocks or vegetation or bramble bushes and they would enclose, make as it were, a fence out of vegetation, a fence out of the rock and the debris of the camp in the vicinity or in the area. And so since they were out yonder on the outside of the city or the outside of the village, they did not have the material to construct a door. They did not have the material but a supply a door. And so they would erect the enclosure, Brother Chris, of the sheepfold, if you please, and then they needed a door. You say, why did they need a door? Because the door would secure the enclosure and the door would protect the sheep and the door would keep the wolf and the fox and the lion and the bear out of the sheepfold. And so they didn't have the material and they didn't have the workmanship uh, to create a door. So Brother Randy, you know what those shepherds would do? They'd get all the sheep. I love it, amen. They'd get all the sheep inside the enclosure, inside the sheepfold. And so at night, Brother David, they would need a door uh, to secure the sheepfold. And you know what those Bible shepherds would do? They would literally, I like this, they would literally lay down their life at the entrance and they would become the door. And since they became the door, that did two things. That kept the enemy out, that kept the lion out, that kept the bear out, that kept the wolf out, but Brother Kyle, it also kept the sheep in, all right? The restless sheep. And I want to tell you, thank God Jesus Christ, he is the door, amen, of the sheepfold. What does all that mean? I want to tell you what it means. By him, it's the only entrance into the sheepfold of the kingdom of God. I said by Christ is the only entrance into the sheepfold of the family of God. He said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the light. And ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that if he's the door, and the Bible says that he is the door, that there is no other way, amen. No other way. Stay with me, okay? Stay with me. I want to say this about him being the door. And by the way, he was willing, as it were, as it were to lay down his life, to lay down his life, if necessary, in protecting those sheep, in securing those sheep, in making sure that those sheep are all preserved in the fold. Now, if somebody hasn't told you lately, I want to be the first one to tell you this week and on this Sunday morning that 2,000 years ago, but Jesus Christ, the Son of God, you know what he did? He laid down his life. I want you to know that. He willingly and lovingly and voluntarily and laid down his life but to be nailed to a cross, but to shed his blood, but to become our substitute and to become our redeemer and thank God become our savior. And ladies and gentlemen, if you're in this sanctuary this morning and you ever have a desire to go to heaven and be with God eternally, you're going to have to go the same way that the rest of us went, and that's through the door, amen. And I want to tell you, he is the door. Without apology, he is the door, all right? I want to say some things about this door, okay? The door of the sheepfold. I want to say, first of all, and I want your prayers, all right? I'm going to be evangelistic, hopefully talk to us saints in a little bit. 
but we've got some evangelistic orders right now, all right? Can I tell you this? He's an open door. Somebody say, he's an open door. I want you to know he's an open door. Are you listening? The door's open. The door's open, sir. The door's open, ma'am. I'm talking about Christ. He's available. I said he's available. He's willing. You say, but I thought you said that he laid down his life. He did lay down his life, and they buried him, Brother Kyle. But thank God, three days later, he come up out of the grave, victorious over death, hell in the grave. And so I say to this audience this morning, not only is he the door of the sheepfold, not only is the door of the sheep, but thank God he's an open door. And I want to say, secondly, write all this down, all right? Not only is he, Brother Dale, an open door, but I say this emphatically, he's the only door. He's the only door. I'm going to nail that real tight right now, okay? I want to tell you, religion will not save you. The Baptist will not save you. The Catholic definitely will not save you. The Presbyterian will not save you. The AME Zion Church, it will not save you. The Presbyterians will not save you. I said the Baptists, the Southern Baptists, oh, they will not save you. Oh, the Mormons will not save you. Oh, the Jehovah's Witness will not save you. Alcoholics Anonymous will not not save you. Are you listening? There's only one door. There's only one way. There's only one solution. I said there's only one solution and there's only one answer. And if you don't go through the door, I then mean, you're not going through. If you don't come through the door and you'll not enter in, he's not only an open door. I said he's not only an open door, but thank God he's the only door. The only door. Number three, not only he, Dr. Maccabee, not only is Jesus Christ an open door, and not only is Jesus Christ the only door, but let me say this, he's an opposing door. So what in the world do you mean by that? He's an opposing door. Look in verse number eight, everybody. Look in verse number eight. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. Then he said in verse nine, I am the door. In other words, what he was comparing himself to, Brother David, we know this is the Pharisees. We know this is Judaism. We know this is false religion. And I need to say something about religion. It's not your friend. Look up here, friend. Religion is not your friend. Religion is not your answer. I said religion is not your answer. Somebody said, I'm going to give me a dose of religion and it'll change my life. No, it will not. I'm going to join a church and that'll change my life. No, it will not. I'm going to have self-reformation or self-help, self-reformation or self-help, and that'll change my life. No, you know what I say about all that? They're thieves and robbers. They're thieves and robbers, and they'll steal your soul, and they'll destroy your soul, and they'll take you away I'm from Jesus Christ, the only door. I say without apology. I say with the authority of the word of God. God, I say with the call of God on my life that Jesus Christ is an open door and he is the only door. And he's an opposing door. He opposes religion. He opposes self-help. He opposes self-reformation. He opposes do it yourself. He opposes lift yourself up by your own bootstrap. He opposes 12 steps. Somebody help me. I said he opposes all that. What are you trying to say? I'm trying to say that the greatest need of your life, the greatest need of your life is to walk through the door. Walk through the door. While the choir was singing, I thought about Brother Ben and I trying to get my mind on the message. I thought about, I thought about coming into this sanctuary. Here's a set of double doors. Coming into this sanctuary, Brother Pittman, 
There's another set of double doors coming through the back of the front of the sanctuary. Is that set of double doors and that set of double doors. But I want to tell you something. That's not the way it is with heaven. That is not the way it is with heaven. That is not the way it is in the kingdom of God. That is not what it's going to be like to get into the family of God. Jesus Christ is the only open door. Amen. I'm glad as a 16-year-old young man. Say, what are you doing? Don't worry, I know what I'm doing. 99% of you know what I'm doing. As a 16-year-old boy, Brother Stoltz, I came up to that door and it was open. It was open. Thank God I didn't have to kick it in. I didn't have to pry. I feel like preaching. I didn't have to pry it open. I didn't have to dynamite it. I didn't have to blast it. I didn't have to pray through it. I didn't have to straighten up. I said I didn't have to straighten up. I didn't have to change my life. I just confessed my sin. I repented my sin. And you know what I found out? The door was wide open. Thank God. Are you listening? Are you listening? The door is open today. Nothing in my hands I bring, simply to the cross I cling. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. The way of the cross leads home. There is a fountain filled with blood drunk from an angel's vein. And sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilty stands. I, come out the Lord, I am the door. Amen. Is that settling? Is that, is that, is that, is that, is that, is that, is that a, is that a, a declaration that needs no debate? Is that a declaration that doesn't need propped up? I am the door. I'm not finished, all right? You're not finished, are you? It ain't fair for you to be finished and me not to be and vice versa, amen. Stay on the same page. He's not only an open door, he's not only an only door, he's not only an opposing door to oppose the thieves and the robbers. David, Brother David, I found this was interesting. Talks about the thieves and the robbers would climb up some other way. I believe that's found in, yeah, verse one. Look at verse one. He that entered not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. How do you climb an enclosure that's only about knee high out in the Judean wilderness that's an open air like structure with no roof for the mob, but a door and that's Christ how do you climb? Well, this is a reference to what I told you what happens in the village or in the city. They would erect stone walls with an archway and even Josh in that archway, you know who'd be the door? The shepherd would be the door. Whether it's in the village or the city of the Marge Jordan, or whether it's out on the Judean hillside. So, but here's my point. The thief and the robber. Does anybody know? God is preaching to him. Does anybody know what the thief and the robber represents? Do you know what the thief and the robber? I didn't know this. Brother Randy Jr. didn't know this. The thief and the robber would climb up some other way. Jared, they wouldn't go through the door. He said, well, why wouldn't they go through the door? Because that's where the shepherd was. And I want to say this in Cal Penn's language. If they came through the door and the shepherd's there, somebody was going to carry away a tail whip and say amen. Somebody's going to get the rear end kicked by the shepherd who was willing to lay down his life for the sheep. But you know, Brother Marty, you know why I found out those thieves and robbers would do? And why did God call them thieves? And why did God call them robbers? He's talking about the Pharisees, and he's busy he's talking about religion. But they would actually scale the wall in the enclosure at the village or at the town, and they'd take a sharp knife, watch this, slit the throat of the sheep, mangle them, leave them to bleed out, to die, and then take the carcass, the body, 
and throw them over unto somebody on the outside. So they were thieves and robbers and murderers. And I want to tell you something right now. That's what the devil wants to do. That's what the demons of hell wants to do. Believe, believe me when I tell you, sir, that's what religion wants to do. It wants to, as it were, cut your throat, let you bleed out, let you die and go to hell, let you die and go to hell. But Jesus, not only an open door, and not only uh, the only door, but he's an opposing door. He said, I'm the door, and I'm against all the thieves. I'm against all the robbers. I'm not climbing up some other way. I'm not scaling the wall uh, to try to rob and plunder and murder and steal and ravish the flock. I'm willing to lay down my life for the flock. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God. Let me say this to you. You know what he said? Look in verse number seven again. Look in verse seven. I am the door of the sheep. Look in verse nine. Stay with me. I am the door. Do you know though right there, he says that he claims to be the door personally. Watch this outline right here. He claims to be the door personally. I am. Not Michael the archangel, not Gabriel an angel, not a seraphim, not a cherubim, not, not any angelic host. No, no, no. Not Jeremiah, not Isaiah, not the weeping prophet, not Hosea, not Joel, not Noah, not Moses. Who is the door? Who is the door? I am the door. You'll like this now. You'll like this, all right? He claims or declares to be the door personally. But then number two, watch this. Watch this. He claims to be the door exclusively. Exclusively. Watch this. Now watch this now. I don't know if I preach this yet. I am the door. Not a door. Not some door. Not another door, I am the door. All God's people said, he claims Dr. Maccabee to be the door personally, I am. He claims to be the door exclusively, the door. Watch this now, look in verse number, verse number nine, I am the door by me if what? If any man, is that you sir? I said, is that you ma'am? Is that you? He not only claims to be the door personally, and he claims to be the door exclusively, but thank God he claims to be the door universally. Yeah. Universally. If any man, you say, but I've got a lot of sin. Look on up here. Yeah. If any man, but you don't know how wicked yeah. I am. If any man, yeah. you don't know how far in sin I've gone. Yeah. If any man, yeah. you don't know what a mess I've made made of my family, what a mess I've made of my life, you want a mess I've made of everything, if any man, red, red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight, Jesus loves the little children and the big children of the world, the Bible said, I am the door, he claims it personally, he claims it, ladies and gentlemen, he claims it not only personally, but he claims it exclusively, and he claims it universally. If any man, now I want anybody in this building, I want right now, and I don't do this much, I don't do this much, and you gotta be fearful about doing what I'm about to do, but I want anybody in this building, on this lower level, or that upper level, to stand up and tell me, that you don't fit the criteria for if any man. Any takers? Anybody left out? Stand up and tell me you're left out. It's limited atonement my hind leg. I said limited atonement my hind leg. God died for a select few, that's a bunch of hard work. That's lies out of hell. He said, but I'm too far gone. You're not too far gone. He said, but I've wrecked my family. It don't matter. I've lost my job. I've lost my income. I don't have a house to live in. I don't have a car to drive. I don't even have a driver's license. I don't have a driver's license. Here's what God said. If any man, if any man, if any woman, he claims to be the door personally.
universally. He claims to be the door universally. Universally. Is anybody in this building left out? Are you left out because of your sin? Are you left out because of your debauchery? Are you left out because of your marijuana? Are you left out because of your old Milwaukee? Are you left out because of your crack cocaine? Are you left out because of your drug habit? Are you left out because you can't quit the bottle? You're not left out. You're not left out. If any man. So what about they get quiet. What about the color of my skin? I'm just getting my second wind. What about the color of my skin? If any man. What about what about where I was born? If any man. What about my nationality? If any man. What about what about my kinfolk? If any man. What about how sorry I am now, if any man? What about how I'm sitting in church and I wish I had a drink, if any man? What about I'm sitting in your church and I wish I had some marijuana, if any man? What about you don't know the crime? You don't know I've been in jail. I've served prison. I've been in prison, if any man. I am the door. I am the door. You know what you got to do? Here's the problem. Here's the problem. Not all that stuff I've been preaching about for the last six minutes. The problem is you won't walk through the door. Any man. Any man. Thank God I'm glad I walked through the door. God, I'm glad I'm on the inside. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's good. I said God's good. Glad I got saved one day. Glad I found out I was going to hell. Glad I found out I was going to hell. Glad I found out I deserved hell. Glad I found out I was a wicked sinner. But thank God Jesus said, I am. Look what he said. Look what he said in verse 9. By me, if any man enter in, you can enter in. You should enter in. What are you waiting on? What are you waiting on to enter in? Why are you not going to enter in? What in God's name are you waiting on? He's an open door. He's the only door. He's an opposing door. But I want to tell you, thank God, he declares these things. I'm the door personally. I'm the door exclusively. I'm the door universally. And I am the door certainly. I am the door certainly. Look at verse number nine. He shall be saved. Shall be saved. Saved from a house that's on fire? No. Saved from a drowning in a lake? No. Saved from what? Saved from the power of sin. I am saved from eternal damnation in hell. Thank God he's the door personally. He's the door exclusively. He's the door universally. And Brother Ben, he's the door certainly. Shall be saved. And I want to say, he's the door completely. Completely. Shall be saved. Did you know that the door represents to the believer that trusts Christ, that we know him savingly, verse nine. Look, I'm trying to hurry. We know him savingly, shall be saved. We know him, I'm gonna preach this tonight. I don't preach it, I can't do this. I can't do a good meal that way. There are five, five things. No, let me go ahead and just hit them. I don't know why. I'll be too tired to preach tonight, but that's all right. I'm going to preach if I can. Can we know him savingly? We know him liberatingly. Shall go in and out. I like that. Shall go in and out. We know him protectively. In. 
We go in at night. We know him protectively. We know him provisionally. I like this now. We know him provisionally. And fine pasture. I pulled up yesterday. I was sitting in my study. I pulled up the words of the Isaac saying, Is not this the land of Beulah? Thank God, blessed, blessed land of life. I want to tell you I'm glad, thank God, I found a pastor. I'm glad I'm sipping from a fountain that never shall run dry. I'm drinking it out from a fountain that never has run dry. Thank God I'm sitting at a table where there's plenty of food. I have found pasture. I'm satisfied with Jesus. I'm satisfied with the Christian life. I'm satisfied being a child of God. I'm satisfied because God has satisfied me. I'm a sheep that's content. I'm a sheep that's satisfied. I'm a sheep that's happy. I said, I'm a sheep that's happy. I know him. Listen to this. I'm hurried. I know him savingly. I know him liberatingly. I know him protectively. And I know him provisionally. I know him provisionally. Shall find pasture. I watch this, Brother Trey. I know him eternally. I know him eternally. Shall find, shall have life. Look in verse number nine. Look in verse nine. Oh, verse number two. Verse number yeah. No, verse number ten. I'm come that they might have life. I know him eternally. We're not talking about endless existence. We're not talking about natural life. We're talking about eternal life. Eternal life. I'm gonna live forever. I've got eternal life as a present possession. And so here's my outline. I know him savingly. I know him liberatingly. I know him protectively. I know him provisionally. I know him eternally. And last but not least, last but not least, I know him abundantly. I know him abundantly. Look at verse number 10. That they might have life and have it what? More abundantly. Sir, 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 I've drank all I've wanted to drink since I got saved. Hallelujah. I didn't, I didn't really quit drinking. You know I really didn't quit drinking. I said I didn't quit drinking, sir. When I got saved, I just changed fountains. I said I just changed fountains. I've smoked all the marijuana that I've wanted to smoke. I've popped all the pills that I've wanted to pop. I've got high as many times I've wanted to get high. I've snorted enough crack and enough crack, the cocaine and crack, but the problem is I just don't want any of it. Why, why? Because not only did I find light, but I found it more abundantly. There's nothing like being saved. I said there's nothing like being saved. There's nothing like being saved. There's nothing like having the peace of God. There's nothing, there's nothing, there is nothing, absolutely nothing like being a child of God. There is nothing, no nothing, no nothing on this whole earth that can compare with the abundant life, the abundant life. Abundant life. He didn't just give you life. Stand up and tell me what day and year it was again. Stand up and tell me real loud. 74. S still saved, right? Still drinking from the fountain. Got peace of God that passes all understanding. Got joy in the Holy Ghost. Got contentment like you never know. Can sleep at night. God's been good, amen. I said, God's been good. He not only gives life, he not only gives life, he not only gives life, he gives abundant life. Abundant life. Hallelujah. All right, well, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to this. God's, God's not finished yet. I mean, remember when we were little, when we were little, little, I don't mean this way little, 
ma'am, I wasn't about to preach about weight. I said a little, short, okay? We were young. I remember we were young. We didn't have much, but Brother Perry, when we got a nice toy, we just played with it and played. Now we got to do all this. But we got a nice toy, we played with it like there was no other toy in the whole house. I remember, probably only cost about 80 cents, maybe 70. My mama took us to the store and saw one of them Super Balls. Black, solid Super Balls. My mom won. My mom won. All right, go ahead and get one. What's it do? What's it do? Well, you go home and you take a regular little ball and sir, you, sir, y'all listen, I'm just glad you listen. You throw it and it bounces and you gotta reach down and grab it. But that Super Bowl, Meredith, yeah. that yeah. black Super Bowl, yeah. some of y'all are old enough to run. Do you yeah. know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Bob Jackson, I know you had a Super Bowl. <laughs> now, anybody went down the mountain up there and asked for a button. You had to chase it, but at least you had one. That Super Bowl, Miss Meredith, you'd throw it and you wouldn't have to bend down and grab it. Boom, boom. Yeah. Boom, boom. Son, it was on, man. You talking about fun? Bounce it, and the harder you throw it, Brother Jeff with us, harder you throw it, higher it would go. It super abounded. It didn't just abound. Surely, man, it's, it's not too late to keep preaching, is it? It didn't just abound, Cam. It's super abound. I mean, if Chris pours over with this over your head, you yeah. was running around trying to catch it. An 88 cent toy, I'll take it. How about you? Whole lot better than a 399 iPad, say amen. Yeah. Or a doggone laptop computer. I'm not fussing at you, but anyway, things have sure gone up from the Super Bowl and the G.I. Joe days. I'll take a G.I. Joe any day. Oh, yeah. amen. Say amen, Todd. Say, Todd, Todd still got G.I. Joe. Every now and then, him and Suzanne sit down and play with him. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. He does not. He, he keeps them. He's kept them. That Miss, 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 Miss Malia, that Super Bowl, bam, bam. I should have brought one. Bam, bam. Bam, bam. And that's what happened. When God saved me, he put the Super Bam, bam. The Super Bam, bam. On that side. He said, I'll not only give you life, I'll give it to you more abundantly. Sir, do you understand what you're missing? Come on, Lord. Do you have any idea what you're missing? Do you have any foggy idea of what I'm talking about? I'm talking about peace that passes all understanding. Do you have peace? You got peace? Lift up and thank him. Thank him. All right, now go ahead and play. Go ahead and play. You got peace? Lift up your hand and thank him. Say, thank you, Jesus. How long have you been saved? Oh, come on. 13 years you've been saved. How long have you been saved? How long you been saved? Seven, how so many? Seven, how long you been saved? One. Eleven, how long you been saved? How many? How long you been saved? And you been saved? So I say louder. Almost a year. How many? Three, how about you? Five. Five, that's great. And every one of these people, you know what they have? They not only have life, now here's the catch. They've got the capability to have abundant life. Yes, yes. Abundant life. We're not just talking about getting along. We're not just talking about, well, I'm saved. I'm just a Christian. We're talking about thrill. We're talking about fire. We're talking about excitement. We're talking about enthusiasm. We're talking about joy in the Holy Ghost. We're talking about contentment, sir. We're talking about satisfaction. We're talking about a motive to live. I'm talking about it gives life, but it gives it more abundantly. Listen to me, friend. I'm not climbing up the rough side of the mountain. I'm not doing my best to make it in. I'm already in. I'm already in. I not only have life, but I have it more abundantly. I'm telling you, it's a wonderful thing to be a Christian. It's a great thing to be a Christian. It's a wonderful day to be saved. I said it's a wonderful day to be saved. It's a good day to give your life to God. I said it'd be a good day to give your life to God. It's a beautiful Sunday out there. It's a beautiful day to give your life to God. And that's what you better do. That's what you need to do. He's the open door. He's the only door. He's an, he's an opposing door. He's open for you, sir. Ma'am, he's open for you. Go ahead and walk in. 
It's not barred. It's not shut. It's not guarded. It's not ultra secure. Go ahead and walk in. Walk in today. Walk down this aisle right now. Walk down this cone aisle. Walk down this aisle. Walk down this aisle. Fall in this altar. And say, I want what that preacher's talking about. I want to, I want to receive Christ. I want to take Christ as my Savior. I want Christ as my Lord. I want to turn from my sin. I want to turn from my sin. And I want to confess my sin. And I want to trust Jesus Christ, my Savior. The door's open. The door's open. Step out. Step out on this first verse. Let's sing, everybody. Sing. Sing it. Amen. Amen. Step out today. Step out today. Step out today. Step out today. Sing it, Kyle. In the balcony, everybody sing now. Sing. Sinners. If the door's open and it is open, the only thing or person that's keeping you from walking through that open door is yourself. It's yourself. It's open. Now, you know I've preached the best I can preach. I've laid it out there the best I could. Brother Mayo, it's open. Jesus is available. It's your choice, sir. It's your choice. You can walk out all these doors and you can say no one more time. And that's the choice you have. But I'd recommend, Brother Kevin, I'd recommend Highly, I'd recommend highly yes, that you come through the door. The Bible said, He shall be saved. Let's sing another verse. Everybody lift your voice. Come on. 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 I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. And there may I. Well, let's see. said, I want you to do me a favor. I want you, when you leave here, you're going to have to exit through a door. When you go eat in a little bit, you're going to have to walk through a door. When you go to your bedroom this evening, you're going to go through a door. When you use the bathroom the facilities here at home at the restaurant, you're going to go through a door. When you go out in the public this week, whether it's the post office, the bank, Rite Aid, uh, Red Rooster, you're going to go through a door. Everybody with me? Here's what I want you. Here's the favor. Here's the favor. Every door you go through, every door, I want you to remember on a Sunday morning of January the 21st of 2018, you heard a message that was entitled, I am the door. And you remember that he's always open. He's available. If it ever gets shut, listen, I'm finished. Yeah, if it ahead. ever gets shut, it's shut because of your making. Right, boy, you're right. Boy, right. right. 
I wouldn't leave here lost. So when you got awful plain about a lot of stuff, well, would you rather me be plain or pussyfoot around? Need to be plain. You say, well, why, why are you so plain? And look at me. I, I want you to know this about me. Because I care about you. I care about you. I really care about you. Thank you for listening. Let me give you a prayer request and we're going to go home. I was late this morning, just maybe five minutes late, because I went to the hospital this morning and visited Brother James Conner. Brother James Conner had a three, three bypass surgery uh, two, two and a half days ago. Uh, he's in CVRU as we speak. Well, no, they're going to be moving to Four Heart, which is great. But he had a lot of swelling, a lot. I mean, noticeably. I, I was shocked. I was shocked. So uh, he's okay, but I guess that means he's retaining fluid. Is that what that means? Retaining a bunch of fluid? So. Uh